Oh, Captain, my captain. This is the Club Fantasy DFS showdown preview videos for the Thursday night primetime games. I'm Joshua Hudson, your host. Finally back, a little bit displaced, but we're back and we're recording, and that's the that's the plus side. Austin's with me. He's going to be breaking down all of the top plays, how to build out the best showdown slate lineups for Thursday nights. Denver Broncos versus the New Orleans Saints. Stay tuned. Welcome, everybody, to Oh Captain, My Captain, Club Fantasy's DFS Showdown preview videos. I'm your host, Joshua Hudson, at the One Hudsonian on Twitter. That is the captain, at Austin underscore FFL, Austin Amendoli, our DFS expert here at Club Fantasy. Austin, how are we doing? This is, well, we're recording this today beforehand, but we're going to be talking about Thursday night. So how are you doing, buddy? Uh, do, you know, I'm hanging in there. It's 930 for me right now. I'm in I'm in the state of Washington, uh, taking care of some some family, just been babysitting. And, you know, I don't have any of my podcast stuff. So we're, we're just hanging in there. We're here for it. We're just doing the damn thing. That's OK. You're displaced. I'm displaced. A sinking ship, it feels like, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which this game feels like a sinking ship as well. That's the prelude. That's the setup here. <laughs> We're heading into week seven of the NFL season. Thursday night is the Denver Broncos versus the New Orleans Saints. This is going to be an ugly one because there's a lot of potential injuries that are playing into how this game is going to be played. So we'll get into some of our, our picks that we like or more, or more appropriately, excuse me, that Austin likes. But first, Austin. Tell everybody how they can play these DFS slates against us here at Club Fantasy. Yeah, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on one of your podcast streams, there is a link in the show description that will take you to our DraftKings League where you can play not just Thursday night showdowns with us, but also Sunday night and Monday night showdowns with us and the Sunday main slate. So join that join that league. It's $2 contest every time. And uh, recently they haven't been filling up. So you only have to be like four people to make money this is true this is true and i will be back playing these because i'll have internet and you know the fun things that allow me to do this this degenerate lifestyle of fantasy football and dfs so um but real quick before we get into the picks let's talk about our sister site women of fantasy football and their lovely partnership with trophy smack you can go to trophy smack.com forward slash waff that's w-o-f-f get all of your achievement-based needs, your trophies, championship belts, championship rings, show off that bling and rub it in your league mate's face. You can get the loser of your leagues uh, some fun little greeting cards that thank them for sucking and making your life so much easier. You can even get your commissioner, the one who does the thankless work throughout your fantasy football leagues, some cool little swag and show them a little appreciation. Once again, that's trophysmack.com forward slash WAF. That is our unique link. And you can find it in the description of either the video that you're watching or the podcast that you are listening to. Trophysmack.com forward slash WAF. All right, Austin, let's get into these picks. And of course, the first, Captain Chalk. This is the Chalky pick, the captain that you are building your lineup around because let's face it, maybe they're the most expensive, but there's a reason they're the most expensive. Talk to us about Alvin Kamara, who really is the best player on the football field thursday night yeah i mean that's it he's he's the only player that i think anybody might be excited to play during this matchup frankly everybody else is kind of like eh, i guess i have to play them but alvin Kamara, he's just he continues to get ridiculous amounts of volume yeah he maybe hasn't been hitting his full ceiling the past couple of weeks but come on it's alvin Kamara. he can have like a four touchdown game um, the matchup also bodes well because the Denver Broncos have been really great against the receiver position. So that means they'll need to, that New Orleans will need to run the ball more. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit because um, there's, there's a certain cornerback that is not going to play in this game or most likely that will change the receiver position a bit. But 
you still are going to want to rely on the running backs, particularly too, because this is a very low under over in this matchup. It's a 37 point over under that is ridiculously low. New Orleans are favored, um, but they are have an implied team total. Sorry, they're not favored in this matchup because Spencer Rattler is starting. Um, they're two and a half point underdogs. Um, so they're projected to score only 17 points in this game. I think Kamara could probably score all of those points for them, just score two touchdowns, and hey, maybe he could chip in a field goal. Who knows? This is true. And of course, the added PPR value, which if you're playing on DraftKings, that always comes into play when it comes to Alvin Kamara and his price. So let's go a little bit contrarian with this. Our next topic is the Mutineer. These are the contrarian captain choices that offer some variety and some upside in some of these larger tournaments. Um, you have a couple of options. One I find very, very interesting because there's a chance that he may not play. Let's talk. Let's stay on that same side of the football and talk about Chris Olave. Yeah, so the real point of putting Chris Olave here is just take whoever the number one pass catcher uh, receiver is for New Orleans in this matchup, whether it's Chris Olave and he plays or if it's Rashid Shahid, either way works. Um, I put Chris Olave in there because uh, he's he's currently this is questionable. So that means he could start. And if he does, I'm playing him because I think most people are going to look at that big red first next to Chris Olave's name that says that the Denver Broncos have been the toughest matchup for receivers this year, which is true. However, Pat Sertan is most likely not going to play in this matchup. The last I checked, he was not yet ruled out, but he had he went out of Sunday's game with a concussion since the NFL revamped their concussion protocol a couple of years ago. There have been no players who have played the next game after exiting with a concussion. They almost always miss. So I am betting Pat Sertain is going to miss this game, which will open up a little bit more room for the, the receivers. So I'm glad you said receivers, but when you preface Patrick Sertan suffered a concussion last week and won't play Thursday, Chris Olave suffered a concussion last week likely will not play Thursday either. Rashid Shahid now dealing with a knee injury that is considered significant. There's an opportunity here for some completely random unknown wide receiver to step up. That isn't going to cost anything close to what Chris Olave will be playing. So keep this in mind. Pay attention to the news reports, people, because you might be getting a great discount as a contrarian captain choice here with whoever ultimately steps into that number one role at wide receiver for the Saints. So on the flip side to that, you mentioned the running backs, kind of a lower over under. Let's talk about Javante Williams because he struggled a little bit this year, just gaining some consistency in this offense, but he is still being used. And we know the Denver Broncos love throwing to their running backs. Yeah, exactly. There's some PPR upside here. Also, the matchup is actually pretty good because new orleans has been struggling against running backs in recent weeks uh, we just saw them get, get run over by bucky irving and john tucker um which i expected bucky irving i did not expect john tucker to go off uh last week so i, I feel good about javonta williams also coming off of a short week um it could be particularly tough for the saints defense to kind of recoup get that rest and be ready to stop the run game again um, against a team that's going to want to run the ball since week three, the Saints have allowed the second most points to the running back position. That's 35 points per game on DraftKings scoring allowed to the running back position. So I feel very comfortable using Javante Williams. Um, we're not going to talk about defenses in this show, but what I will say is if for both of the running backs that are named so far, Alvin Kamara and Javante Williams, if I'm playing them in my captain spot because it's a little over under, I am very likely to play their associated defense to get a little correlation to say if the saints just run away with this the defense probably did really well and so did alvin Kamara. and similarly if the broncos run away with it javante williams and the broncos defense likely played really well we're playing chess not checkers people listen to austin he knows what he's doing all right next topic here is your first mate we've gone through we've identified the captains let's fill out the crew these would be your flex spots that help maximize your lineup choices you, you mentioned a little bit on defense how about the kicker position? Because Austin, you very rarely ever talk about kickers when it comes to these DFS preview shows, but you like Will Lutz here. Yeah, and honestly, the thinking here is like, it's going to be a low scoring game, most likely. Both of these teams have kind of spread the ball around uh, the past couple of weeks with all of these injuries, with um, 
Bo Nix and that offense being whatever the heck it is. Like there hasn't been a clear dominant pass catcher receiver outside of the and but the running backs have carried the load for both teams, particularly on the New Orleans Saints side. And so because of that, it's harder for me to find like really reliable receiving options in this matchup. So I'm looking to the kickers in this matchup, particularly on the Denver Broncos side where Bo Lutz, like we know he can he can kick the ball pretty dang well. And if he ends up with 10 to 15 points in a low scoring game like this could be very valuable in your DFS lineups. So let's stay on the same side of the football. Um, again, we briefly touched on the amount of injuries at the wide receiver position. Who are some of the other pass catchers? Let's talk about Juwan Johnson. Yeah, so it's about the receivers at the receiver position. It's also just about um, where Denver has given up their points. So while they have been the toughest matchup for receivers, they have been a little bit, a little bit, uh, they've been a little bit soft against the tight end position. Since week three, Denver has allowed the fifth most points to the tight end position. Um, that that ranks, uh, sorry, they've allowed the eighth most points to the tight end position, which um, is about 14 points per game, um, which is just below actually the Saints on this one, who have also allowed a lot of points to the tight end position since week three. Um, so it's pretty good. Like Jawan Johnson, if he can get like four targets and get in the end zone, again, it's a similar thinking as Will Lutz. I'm not expecting some of these players need to do too much to, in order to, to help you move up the board in these DFS matchups because of how low scoring it'll be. But Juwan Johnson has been active, especially if uh, Taysom Hill is out once again. I think then that really opens up both Jawan Johnson and another tight end that we'll get to in a moment. All right. So let's hit up the deck scrubbers. The next topic here. These are going to be your cheaper punt play options uh, that can make or break a lineup based on one play and limited opportunity. Let's stay on the tight end train with the Saints. Let's talk about Foster Moreau. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of betting on like, what if both tight ends have a good game? What if they both get a few catches along a long reception uh, and a touchdown? Seems like honestly very possible in this game, especially how low scoring it is. So. If you have Alvin Kamara in your captain spot, you want to have the New Orleans Saints defense say they do, they get a couple sacks and turnovers, and then maybe even play both tight ends. Why not? Like they both were active last week. They both got a decent amount of targets last week. Um, and with Foster Moreau, I think with Taysom Hill being out, he's gotten more run in this in this New Orleans Saints offense. He has he had a touchdown two weeks ago. Uh, last week, he had a big chunk play for about, like something like 40 yards that really helped him score plenty of fantasy points. So these tight ends, they they are going to do it on low volume. I think you could play either one. You could play both if you want to are in a large field tournament and want to do something particularly different. But given that even though Pat Sertan is out, like the Denver cornerbacks as a whole have been good. So it's still going to be it's not going to be easy for the receivers because Pat Sertan is out. And so the tight ends may be the beneficiaries of that. So I, I like the idea of targeting tight ends on the New Orleans Saints side. Maybe you decide this game hits the over and you want to bet on that. And you put some lineup where you have Spencer Rattler in your flex spot as well. I'm not sure I would put him in my captain spot yet because I don't know that he has that ceiling. But if you say put Alvin Kamara in your captain spot and then you want to go Spencer Rattler and both tight ends, that's a really unique way to go. Um, and given the nature of how this offense might function on a Thursday night short week with a backup quarterback, it could actually work. Don't hate it. We talk a lot about the New Orleans Saints. G- give me some some hope with the Denver Broncos, because really the only one we've mentioned is Javante Williams. L- let's talk about somebody who actually caught a touchdown this past week, Troy Franklin. Yeah, I've noticed Troy Franklin has been getting more opportunities, particularly in the red zone, which the Broncos haven't been there all that much this season. So, like, there's been limited opportunities, but he's been getting worked more into this offense. And, again, this is the deck scrubbers category, so we're looking for those cheaper plays. I think Troy Franklin is worth the punt play. He's only 3K on DraftKings in your flex spot, and he's getting increasing volume, and he's getting high-value targets. And that's kind of one of the things in, in showdown slates is, if you're able to correctly identify which players are going to get in the end zone, that can really help differentiate you because you don't need as much consistent volume. And I don't, I don't feel like any one player is guaranteed to get really good volume in this matchup on the Denver Broncos side that you can just spam that player. So I'm kind of going to be 
mixing and matching and deciding which receiver I get in a particular lineup. I will say you should probably stack them with Bo Nix. And Bo Nix, even though from a football perspective, is still kind of coming along as a rookie, from a fantasy perspective, he's been okay the past two weeks. He scored at least 20 DraftKings points in both of the last two matchups. So if again, if you're betting this game to hit the over, I really don't mind having a lineup where you stack Troy Franklin with Bo Nix and maybe even throw Cortland Sutton in there, who I could see going very under rostered, particularly in the captain spot. Like there's a way to get creative there. If you're betting on this game hitting the over. And I think Troy Franklin could be a key aspect of that type of build. I like it. Friendly reminder, you can play Thursday night's DFS showdown uh, setup against us here at Club Fantasy. Hit the link in uh, the description of either the video you're watching on YouTube or wherever you're listening to podcasts. It's all right there in the description. Hit that link. Come play against us on Thursday night. Take our money. Maybe. Take my money because I'm not as good at this. That's why I'm hosting and not breaking this down. So, um, But this here is my favorite category, the Kraken. These are the lineup traps that sink the ship. I, I Austin, I love how you just said, I'm not naming a player. Just here's your strategy. So take it away. You tell me which one you want to go with first. <laughs> Yeah, so first trap is, to me, getting overweight on this game. I think this game can go so many different directions because it's a Thursday night game. It is a um, weird matchup with a backup quarterback on one side, lots of injuries on both sides of the ball, um, and a rookie quarterback on the Denver side that we're still not quite sure where he's going to progress and where he's going to stabilize. And so for me, I'm not going to be playing a ton of lineups in this game. I also, if I were to, if I were, if I'm saying I want to put, I don't know, $20 on this game and I'm going to max enter a 20 entry contest, I'm going to be being very intentional and getting different lineups and thinking of different game scripts and not just buying into like, this is how this game is going to look. It's definitely going to hit the under. So 10 of my 20 lineups are going to be a running back in the captain spot. Like I'm going to get a little bit more creative if I max enter this, this game, just because I, I could see it goes going so many different ways. We we get games like this on Thursday night where it's like a 37 point over under. I'm like, oh, this is going to be a gross game. And it could be. And then suddenly it's like final score is 31 to 27. And it's just totally different than we expected. Sometimes we get these gross games and it's like final score is 12 to 9. And it was all about the kickers and the defenses. And so I just, I'm either not playing, putting as much money on this game, or I'm being intentional to get different and not just like buy into a single game script in all of my lineups. So we talked a little bit earlier. There's definitely some injuries taking place heading into this game. What's your warning here, Austin? Yes. The other trap is to is not checking the injury status prior to the game because there's so many injuries. I can't even keep up with them. And look, I've been on vacation. I've been taking care of kids the past two days. So all I did was saw Chris Olave was questionable. I didn't even realize he had a concussion on Sunday until Josh said it on this show. So even I need to be checking the injury status before this game starts more. And I just, if you're not looking at it, you might get weird. Not just the injury status, but who is active for this game. There's a player on the Denver Broncos side. I have already forgotten his name, Bailey. Devon Bailey, who has had two weeks where he has popped off. Week one and last week. You may think, oh, well, is that because he was injured weeks two through two through five? No, he was a healthy scratch on all of those matchups. Coach's decision. Because Sean he Payton's going to Sean Payton. Exactly. So even a player that went off last week, you can't count on him starting this week because Sean Payton may say, actually, sorry, he's not starting this week. You need to check it because he could be really good in your lineup because of the, the targets he's getting. But he might not even start. He might not even be on the field or the sideline. There you go. And that'll do it for Oh Captain, My Captain. Friendly reminder, check out our uh, sister site, Women of Fantasy Football's partnership with Trophy Smack, trophysmack.com forward slash WAF. That's W-O-F-F. Go and get all of your achievement-based needs. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff that they have over there uh, that you can show off your league mates and say, you suck and I rule. So that's that. This has been Oh Captain, My Captain, Club Fantasy's DFS showdown video. That is Austin Amendolia at Austin underscore FFL. I'm Joshua Hudson at the one Hudsonian. You can, of course, follow everything that Club Fantasy does 
at Club Fantasy FFL across the socials, as well as the website. The URL is Club Fantasy FFL dot com. Well, Captain, my captain, signing off for week seven. Peace out, everybody.